Hey, hey guys, nice to see you. Nice to see you again. I'm so happy that you're here. Oh, and you're already joining. Oh, that's good. Wow, four people already. Seven, eight, nine, eight, and there you go. Eleven people. Very nice. Eleven, twelve, thirteen. How are you doing, guys? Hey, hey. Uh, I just want to encourage you, if you see me and hear me properly, please... Uh, use the question sections or the chat section simply to say that you can hear me and you can see me so I will know that my, my setup like works well. Oh, there you go. Romel says that he can hear me. That's very good. Francis said the same thing. All right. This means everything works well. <laughs> That's very good. My setup is ready to go and we'll be ready to create this webinar. However, uh, I suggest that we first discuss some stuff just for like few minutes until the other people join and then we will be able like to to proceed uh, with the webinar. Alfred is here too and yep, Romo. Hey guys, hey, Pavo is over here. Hello, hello. So happy that you guys here attending. I'm currently located in Bulgaria, the capital Sofia. It is extremely hot today over here. It was like maybe 36 de degrees celsius which i believe is almost maybe almost 100 fahrenheit maybe <laughs> it's like crazy hot all day long my my like place was totally packed closed and both my acs are like blasting cold air in the room so i can survive this hot day but it is like a pretty normal thing maybe in other countries it's probably very hot too so guys, I encourage you to say hi and to introduce yourself. Feel free to tell me where you guys are from. Yep. So yeah, we'll see where you guys are located. As I said, I'm in Bulgaria, the capital Sofia. And there he is. Francis says that Francis Coates. Sorry if I don't pronounce your name the right way. Francis is from South Africa. He said it's winter over there, but he's looking forward to the summer in a couple months. But in a couple months, isn't this like today is like june july august probably the the summer in south africa in september <laughs> you never know uh dana pizzelli is over here he's a very dedicated member of our community dan is from southampton uk hey dan nice to see you yesterday we had a nice discussion with him related to the british pound american dollar and the way it fluctuated which reminds me that i can simply like pop up my economic calendar in front of me and to discuss the important economic events that appear during the week. So what did we have in Monday? The most important thing was that the European Central Bank President Mario Draghi um, had a speech. And then on Tuesday, Mario Draghi had another speech. Alongside with the Bank of England Governor Carney, his speech which was probably the reason for the big move that we were <laughs> that we were discussing. Uh, in the same day, the Fed Chair Yellen had a speech. Then the next day, on Wednesday again, the Bank of England Governor Carney had another speech alongside with the European Central Bank President Mario Draghi. So it was pretty much a week of speeches. And on Wednesday, we also had the crude oil inventories at, this, at the, the worst than expected like amount of zero point one one eight million barrels which is pretty much close to two zero in my opinion yep and today we got uh, the gross domestic product of america of the united states of america at 1.4 percent on a 1.2 percent expectations uh pretty much at a better than expected rate 0 0.2 more than the expectations so pretty active trading week and uh, by the way Whoops, that's my chart. This is what happens when you're using couple monitors. But yeah, I wanted to to say a couple of stuff about the euro dollar. Um, probably the economic events and maybe the yeah the crude oil inventories. Uh, maybe or maybe the speech of the, more likely the speech of the European Central Bank President Mario Draghi uh, sent the forex pair the euro dollar in the in the psychological resistance area at 1.14 which is also a top of a big consolidation channel that i have been constantly speaking about the one that started in the beginning of 2015 so if you switch to your weekly chart you will pretty much see that consolidation channel you'll see that the euro dollar is 
is approaching its top. But uh, yeah, and if you watch my life analysis session, you will you will notice that that I constantly speak about this consolidation and that the price was very likely to reach this level. Furthermore, I believe that the price might even go higher. But this is just a suggestion since the last two times, the last two big bottoms went above 1.14. They even reached 1.15 and 1.16. But yeah, that's a pretty good topic. And now I suggest that we waited enough. Maybe it is time to, to proceed with our webinar where I'm going to talk about trend lines and how to identify trends in Forex. And for this reason, now I'm going to take off my pretty face and we will simply proceed with my PowerPoint presentation. And now you don't see me anymore. For this reason, I will simply switch to the next slide that reveals our disclaimer so you will know that we are absolutely right, licensed and regulated company. So I will leave you just for a minute to have a quick look at this slide and uh, to our disclaimer. In the meantime, I will say a few more stuff about the more important stuff on the markets. Well, basically the euro dollar that reached a new high uh, somewhere at Um, this is approximately one year high, I believe. Yeah, it was reached yesterday in the area of 1.14. This is a strong psychological area. So having in mind when trading, you never know if the price is going to create a turning point or not. The other important thing was the situation we're discussing with Dan. Pretty interesting, of course. Yep, the British pound American dollar got out of a bearish channel, broke its bearish channel in bullish direction and created a, something like um, a high, of course, but let me just count it. What type of a high is this? Well, this is maybe like two weeks high or three, almost three weeks high for the British pound American dollar, which is important thing in my opinion. So now... Let's proceed with our presentation and let me tell you what the webinar is going to be about. So I named it Techniques to Identify Real Trends. And I know that the topic might sound a little bit basic to you. However, in this presentation, in this webinar, I plan to reveal some of the, in my opinion, some of, my, some of the crucial techniques that will help you to identify a trend in a better way and is very likely to result into a higher success rate for you when you trade trend lines. And this is what we will cover today. We will go first through the brief trend explanation, uh, where I will be explaining to you like very briefly for the people who are like here for first time, what is a trend line and the types of a trend line. I will try not to spend much time on this. Then I will switch to trend versus potential trend, and I will approach the two chart points alternative on the chart and the three chart point alternative on the chart, which at the respectively respond to a trend and to a, uh, to a potential trend and to a trend line. And I will show you the difference between these two and the way how a potential trend could always turn into a trend. Then we will do some practical examples where I will simply pop up my chart and you will request a forex pair that we will discuss and we will try to identify either a potential trend or a real trend. Then I will tell you how to position your trend line on the chart and I will take into consideration three important stuff. The first thing will be the chart time frame of the platform you're using because it is very important to play with the, with the time frames of your chart in order to find the most suitable one for your trend line. Uh, the second point will be comparing a candle body versus a candle wick, meaning that which of these two we should take into consideration when placing the trend line and the third point will be the trend area versus the single line as i've said many times trend area and a single line are two different things and i believe that the trend area is the more important thing when referring to support and resistance zones and at the same time as a trend line so this is the third point i will discuss of how to position your trend line 
Uh, then we will switch to where to enter a trade and we will proceed with where to put your stop loss order when trading trend lines. And at the end, we will finish with practical examples and a question and answer session where you will be asking me like whatever you want related to the topic or maybe even off the topic you never know. And I will try to, to reply to you in the best possible way. So now I suggest that we begin with this presentation. Switching to the first slide. And now I will provide a brief explanation of what is a trend and how to take advantage of trends in Forex, of course. So the first thing you need to know is that trend or tendency uh, refers to a Forex price increase or a decrease. Meaning that when the price is increasing, there is a trend. When the price is decreasing, there is another trend. And the thing is that money is made during trends and during high volatility because uh, when the volatility when there is like high trading volume volatility is high meaning that a lot of bears and bulls are fighting uh, meaning that when one of these gain dominance the price moves in the respective direction so for example if the bulls are dominating the bears uh, the price is likely to increase if the bears are dominating the bulls the price is likely to decrease in this relation there are two types of trends of course bullish trend and the bearish trend but the bullish trend refers to when the price is increasing and the bearish trend refers to when the price is decreasing the one of the most important things you need to remember is that in most of the time the price is not trending and it is ranging meaning that in most of the cases you will not see a trend on the chart in this relation i advise you not to force yourself into a trading when the trend is absent after all, money is made when there is a trend on the chart because uh, when there is a trend, the price moves, for example, from a lower point to a higher point. And when there is a bearish trend, the price moves from a higher point to a lower point, meaning that you can profit from the difference of the beginning of the trend and the end of the trend. And if you're an experienced trader, you would know how to take advantage of these cases. However, when there is no trend on the chart, you will maybe need to stay out of the market since the trading opportunities are less and there are not that many attractive options to enter the market. So if you're not that experienced, maybe you need to stay out of the market when there is no trend. Of course, this is a, there is an exception if you're a day trader because day traders simply take trade every day like maybe 10 or 20 trades per day or even more where they constantly open and close trades this is when they don't need like a big like big general trend because they simply position their trades based on the time where forex pairs are most volatile during the day however if you're a swing or a position trader you will simply rely on bigger trends and this would be something that you would need you would really need to see in order to to enter a trade of course and now I will tell you about the trend line and the potential trend line rule that honestly I have for myself and I constantly use it. The first thing I'm going to tell you about is the two chart points. So when you have random two ch chart points on the chart, you can always connect these two with a single ray. A ray could be drawn through every two points on the chart. Every ray that goes through two points on the chart is a potential trend. And every two points always share the same ray. However, not every ray is a valid trend line. And I will tell you why not. Because every ray could connect two random points on the chart. Imagine you're holding a couple coins in your hand. Then you simply drop these coins on the floor and they fall down in a random position. No matter the position they take, you would always be able to connect these two points with a single line or a single ray. This is why there is nothing unusual in two random points. Either it is going to be on your floor or on the chart. However, if you get a third point that stays on the same ray, this is no coincidence. Because if you take three coins in your hand and you randomly drop them on the floor, their position will probably not be able to be contained with a single ray. Because the chance they that these three lay 
on the same like rate is minimal maybe eight or maybe nine or maybe like 99 percent chance that these two these three coins will not play on the same rate so the thing is that the trend line confirmations come at the turn point that lays on the same rate and it is a very rare event to see three points laying at the same rate and maybe you will now say hey that's totally wrong because i constantly see like uh, three points laying on the same rate absolutely you constantly see these three points laying on the same rate however i am pretty sure that in more cases you see three points that they are not laying on the same rate meaning that in most of the time you don't have a trend and you have maybe two points because two points always share the same rate that could turn into a trend having three points at the same rate is not very likely to be a coincidence of course it is more likely to be a valid and a tradable price tendency in this relation whenever you spot like for example imagine that the price creates couple bottoms simply place a ray through these two bottoms and wait for the price action to interact with this rate for a third time because this might appear to be a tradable opportunity tradable situation because when the price approaches the rate for third time and when you see hesitation around the rate maybe the price will create a bounce and if this happens you will be getting like the third point the confirmation point you need to enter a trade and now i am going to switch to some practical examples and I would like to encourage you strongly to suggest a chart that you are willing to discuss with me now. So I will be able to proceed with this chart and, for example, to try to identify some, some trend lines or maybe some potential trends and to show you the difference where a potential trend is not turning into a trend line and, for example, where a potential trend turns into a trend. And here it is, Dan. Apicella, our dedicated member, suggests the British pound American dollar. No surprise for me since we had yesterday discussion about this forex pair. So probably it's very interesting to him. So I'm simply now opening my chart, uh, which you are able to see now probably. And you're currently looking at the euro dollar. However, I'm going to switch to the British pound American dollar. Here it is, the daily chart. And I'm going to go to a smaller chart because I'm trying to approach maybe a situation where I have the thing I would like to share with you. So now I'm simply browsing through the one hour chart of the British pound American dollar and I'm trying to find uh, whatever I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to go, yeah, I like this. This is kind of a double top pattern, which I like. And I believe that there might be a trend over here. So, or maybe not. Let me just, mm, yeah, this, this is a good thing. Yeah, I'm going to approach this trend over here. But however, one hour chart is a pretty big chart in my opinion. So I'm going to switch to the 30 minute chart now, uh, April 3rd. Here it is. And then I'm going to go to the 15 minute chart or maybe the five minute chart. Yeah, because yeah, here it is. That's the trend I, I'm, I'm willing to approach now. Uh, here it is. All right. So what I'm telling you, one point, second point, meaning that this over here is a potential trend. If you're looking at it like this, these two tops form a potential trend however are we gonna get a third point that matches the same trend line yep right over here meaning that we have the first point over here the second point over here these are tops the, the first top the second top and the third top since we see that the price conforms to this line for third time this is now a tendency and i believe that the confirmation comes right over here with this big candle it's a bearish candle which at the same time has like a pretty high upper candle wick which shows that after the price touched the trend line uh, it like accounted for an immediate pullback so pretty much if you have shorted the british pound american dollar here you would have been able to get like this decent price decrease furthermore 
when the price returns back it tests the trend line for one more time and creates another drop which is another tradable opportunity on the chart and when i stretch my trend line even further i see that after the fourth interaction with the trend the price breaks the trend line and although it creates a drop right over here it pretty much like changes its direction and hesitates like for a longer time so i believe this is a like a pretty valid example but notice that when i switch to a higher chart it is like harder to recognize this top over here but this is something i'm going to talk about later and now i will show you a situation where you, we simply don't have a potential trend because in in the example i just gave you i had two tops decreasing tops which formed the potential trend and then the third top that matched the same exact line created the confirmation and confirming that the potential trend is actually a real trend this opened the trading opportunity of the third bearish price swing and eventually the fourth bearish price swing so now I am trying to approach. Hmm, let's check about what it needs to be. Maybe. Yeah, all right. Let's simply zoom out the chart. So we'll get like a better picture. Yeah, for example, take a look at this. We have a bottom over here and we have another bottom. So we simply stretch a line and nothing happens nothing unusual however in this case we have three tops first top second top creating the potential trend line this the potential trend line and then we see a third top over here which creates the trading opportunity to trade this small bearish move over here and now let's approach another example where the trend is absent zooming out the chart of course mm. yeah let's for example now when i'm looking at the charts it's very easy for me to find like real trends but not a potential one that does not turn into a real trend so i i, I keep like bugging into the chart now I'm going to give you the example I'm looking for where two points don't turn into a trend. Yeah, all right, let's just check over here. Uh, what do we have? We have a top, we have another top. We simply build a line through these tops. However, we don't see that this the third time the price like like conforms to the level it even like slices through it very quickly creating another higher top which means that this is not a bearish not a bearish trend of course but the interesting thing is that every like since every potential every since every ray that connects couple couple points on the chart is a potential trend it can always be taken as a support or a resistance level and in this case notice that the price very sharply breaks this level and shoots up which creates another maybe tradable opportunity because this is some kind of a breakout. Uh, let's see if I'll be able to give you another example. Yeah, like right over here. We have couple bottoms and third time, no bottom. <laughs> the price simply slides through the trend and starts behaving like differently, not conforming to this trend. So yeah, basically this is how it works with identifying potential and real trends because every potential trend could be turned into a real trend. And for this reason, I suggest that you constantly follow the tops and the bottoms of the price action and you constantly place race through each two tops or each two bottoms on the chart. So you will be able to identify all the possible potential trends on the chart and in case the price interacts with each of these you will have an idea that the price might create actually a turning point on the chart now i will show you some tips about how to position your trend line on the chart so the first thing i will suggest you to do is take a look at all time frames that are able to fit the respective trend you're looking at 
meaning that you will need to play with some of the with uh, some of the chart time frames in order to identify the right one however how to identify the right one and this is why i'm going to the next point which states that a candle wick on a bigger chart represents more candle bodies on a smaller chart for example uh Think that you're looking at the 4-hour chart and you see that the forex pair is creating a big candle wick. However, if you switch to the 30 minutes chart, meaning that you will have like 8 candles more per period, you will see many, many candle bodies. And this, what looks like a candle wick on a smaller chart, is, is represented by many candles with separate candle bodies. Some of these could break through your trend and some of these could not break it through your trend however you should like be careful because if actually you're looking at the right chart time frame and the price is actually breaking through a trend uh this might actually be a valid breakout which could signalize that your trade is uh, actually done so i advise you that you find the time frame that shows no candle bodies below or above the trend line you're approaching i mean depending on below if you're a, if it's a bullish trend and the buckets if it's a bearish trend so the other thing is that you need to think of a trend as a not as a line as a single line but as an area meaning that even if you find some price discrepancies you since you're like approaching this as an area you might not be able to confirm a breakout and uh, in this case you would simply continue trading in the direction you are planning and of course, you can always expect discrepancies, especially when economic events are released. And now I will give you a couple of examples of what I'm talking about. This is, for example, the four hour chart of the Swiss, the American dollar Swiss franc for pair that shows a strong bearish trend. Here it is. And the trend is, of course, marked with the blue line you're looking at the blue bearish line. And notice that this trend is many times tested maybe one, two, three four five six times only in the view that we're currently getting and this is the four hour chart however take a look that we have a couple arrows the red arrows that are pointing to tops which are actually getting through the trend line is this a breakout as you see the left arrow shows a top which is one of the first tops which breaks through the trend is this a breakout well, in this case, not because, as you see, the price continues trending in bearish direction, meaning that it keeps creating more and more tradable bearish opportunities on the chart. This means that we're probably, since there are discrepancies, probably we're not looking at the best uh, chart time frame for the American dollar Swiss franc forex pair, and maybe we need to switch to a bigger chart in order to isolate this volatile price move and in order to be able to see these candle bodies that close above the trend as candle wicks and at the same time we will have the candle bodies maybe below the trend so this makes me switch to the next image which represents the american dollar swiss franc forex pair also known as the swiss uh it shows the daily chart of this forex pair and currently you are looking at exactly the same trend we were approaching before so this trend we were looking at on the four hour chart is this trend, but look, uh, but uh, seen through the daily chart and notice that the candle tops that I was discussing, the tops I was discussing that go above the trend are actually currently below the trend. We only have the candle wicks and the trend line contains the price trend in a very good way, meaning that this is the right chart time frame we can use we should use to trade this bearish trend only in the beginning of the trend there is like very very slight discrepancy at the first stop but this is like so small that it it can be totally disregarded in my opinion and then the the price starts the consistent decrease it decreases it creates bearish impulses impulse after impulse impulse after impulse and at the end you see a sharp break through the bearish trend and the price interrupts the trend and this is how it works and this is a very very useful way to position your to position your trends on the chart simply 
play with the chart time frames and find the right one for your trend line. Then you can simply rely on this chart to confirm eventual breakout. As in our case, see that the candle breaks the trend and the price simply shoots up like for a few days, creates a massive increase. And yeah, and of course, I remind again, some discrepancies are totally accessible. Make sure you observe the trend and how the price behaves. And this will really help you when building your trend line and when trading a trend. Now I will tell you where to enter a confirmed trend in Forex trading. As I already said, the trend confirmation comes at the third point. The first point and the second point that create the potential trend. And the third point that matches the same rate creates the trend confirmation. Your first trade entry should come at the third point as well. Meaning that, uh, take a look at the sketch I created below, representing a bullish trend and a bearish trend. If you're trading a bullish trend, you need to buy in the moment when the price creates the third bottom at the rate and creates a small increase, bullish increase. You buy and you try to catch the trend in both. If there is a bearish trend, as you see at the three at the three tops at the right sketch, if there is a bearish trend, you will identify first the 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 two tops that help you build the ray and the potential trend, and you will sell at the moment when the price touches this bearish trend for third time and shows a small reversal, meaning a bearish bounce. And then you should, of course, you should wait for that bounce and you should buy if the trend is bullish and sell if the trend is bearish. And I would like to say something right over here, uh, which I would like you to know. In my opinion, it is not a good idea to enter a trend that is getting tested for first time. I mean, in my opinion, the best way is to trade a trend is at the third impulse and at the fourth impulse eventually. If the price touches the trend for fifth time, well, after four consistent impulses, do you think that the trend will not be exhausted at the, at the fifth trend wave? Maybe yes, or maybe even if the price increases, it might not go higher than the previous top of the trend. And I currently see um, our, our dedicated member, Ellie Burstein, saying, He's asking, isn't it considered risky to take the fifth wave? In my opinion, yes. And the reason for this is that there is a big chance that the trend is exhausted. So for this reason, I advise you to trade only the third and the fourth price move eventually, because the fifth price wave is very likely to, to finish up with trend exhaustion. So yes, and... Yeah, switching to the next slide now. Now I'm going to tell you about where to put your stop loss order. And I will suggest two options for placing your stop loss order when trading trends. So the first option is to place the stop loss order uh, below the top or above the bottom. Uh, <laughs> I apologize, I made a mistake. Uh, to place the stop loss order below the bottom or above the top. That was created at the moment of the bounce when the price was touching the ray for third time. Meaning that the price will be located, uh, the stop loss order will be located very close to your entry point. This is the tire uh, stop loss alternative, meaning that the, the stop loss will be like closer to your entry point rather than the take profit order eventually in your target. And this option will definitely give you a better win loss ratio since the stop loss order is tight and the target is like bigger in percentage in terms of the risk uh, in terms of the amount you're risking uh, meaning that you will always be aiming for more than you're risking which is which gives you like the good win loss ratio however since the stop loss order is tired this is very likely to lead to more unsuccessful trades uh, and in this case when the price is volatile, it might simply create a big candle wick that touches your stop loss order and closes your trade. And this will put you out of the market for nothing. And <laughs> the other thing is that 
the, the worst thing ever, something that I very like, which is when the price hits my stop loss order and then it moves the way I've planned. This is why I also suggest option number two. I suggest option number two to place the stop loss order uh, below the bottom or above the top that is second in the trend sequence, meaning that you need, of course, you need the first and the second edge to build the ray, and the third edge creates the confirmation. However, if you enter at the third edge, you can put the stop loss order beyond the second edge. This way, your the stop loss order will be pretty loose, actually. However, this has its advantages, and the reason for this is that you will be protected from these like crazy volatile price moves that uh, that are likely to create the big candle wicks which can close your trade. And at the same time, if the price moves in your favor, you will be like there will be a better chance that you're in a trade and to catch this price increase. However, this will not give you that good win-loss ratio since the stop-loss order is loose and like compared to the target you're aiming for, the stop-loss order is positioned like a tire, giving you like uh, not that good win-loss ratio compared to the previous option I gave you. However, the advantage of the option two is that it will definitely lead to less unsuccessful trades. So both options have their like strong benefits and negatives and you should make your mind for yourself which one is better for you but i will give you like something like a third compromised option because in my opinion there is an even better way to do this uh, and now i'm switching to the sketch which will show you the suggestion of stop loss order one the first option i suggested and the second option i suggested notice that the stop Uh, the stop in the first case is like tire and in the second case is it looser. As I said, in the first case, since the stop is tire, it will give you a better win-loss ratio. In the second case, since the stop-loss order is looser, it will give you a worse win-loss ratio. However, the success rate with using stop-loss order option 1 will be lower rather than the success rate of stop-loss order 2, which will be higher. But... I will suggest you like an alternative method, which I'm using. Honestly, I always go with stop loss order option two, the second one. Meaning that I, when I trade trends, I always put my stop loss order below the bottom, not the bottom that I'm currently trading, but the one that came before. In this case, it is a uh, bottom number two. However, if you watch my life analysis sessions and maybe the live trading examples and if you've been to other webinars of mine you will see that i constantly mention that if your trade is not going the way you plan it is not necessary to wait the price action to hit the stop loss order simply close the trade when you use a stop loss order that doesn't mean that the price should like always hit it if the trade if the trade is loose i mean if you're, if you're not like an algorithmic trading, uh, if you're not an algorithmic trader, I advise you to put some thought and some meaning uh, in your trades, meaning that uh, after all, you're a, you're a person with a mind <laughs> and a brain, and you're constantly watching at your chart. Even if your stop loss order is loose and you see that the price action is consistently closing candles below your trend, below the trend line, even without hitting the stop loss order, Simply close that trade because since the price demonstrates altitude to stay below that trend, I don't see a reason holding the trade anymore. So I believe that this is a good alternative because you will always have the stop loss order over there that will protect you from price anomalies. But at the same time, you will, you will let the price action hit that stop loss order in a rare case, meaning that uh, you will not lose as much as suggested by your risk management strategy which are stop loss order but you will lose that much uh, you decide when to exit the trade and i believe that this is uh, always like the better alternative and i see that dan is currently asking is it true that pro traders hunt the tire stop losses to stop a bearish movement 
Um, honestly, I, I'm kind of lost in this question because I'm not sure if I understand it. He's asking, is it true that crow traders hunt tire stop losses to stop a bearish move? Well, if you're like, I'm not sure if I understand. He says to keep the trade bullish on retracement three. Well, if the trend is bullish, like the stop loss order should be below bottom three. Uh, not below bottom three, but below bottom two or three or whatever you pick up. And the purpose of this stop loss order is to to stop your trade in case of a bearish move. That's correct. But honestly, I'm not sure if this is exactly what you're asking. He says on retracement three. Honestly, I'm not sure what you're asking. So if you want, uh, uh, if you want, simply try to paraphrase your question and to to summarize what you want to ask using all the three messages you sent. Because I, I kind of get lost in this message, and I'm not sure if I'm understanding it the right way. And in the meantime, I'm going to I'm going to answer to the next question that comes from Romo. Hey, Romo. Uh, he asks, can we use uh, expansionary Fibonacci levels to determine the target? Exactly. And this is something that I'm going to talk about in this webinar a little bit later in one of the last slides, uh, because uh, you can always use the Elliott wave theory uh, to determine. Uh, your exit points or your entry points when trading trends and eventually for how long the trend could last which in my opinion is a pretty advanced way to to approach to approach uh, trend lines and at the same time uh, Romel I will tell you that this was actually maybe maybe three months ago I conducted a webinar on the Elliott wave theory, where I explained in details what is the Elliott wave theory about, including all the levels, all the five waves plus the the three reversal waves. Everything was explained on a webinar from three months ago. And if you're on the trader plan, you will be able to go to the webinar database and simply watch this webinar because I believe it's going to be very useful uh, to you. Actually, this was the first webinar I conducted for Forex Ball. And yeah, we, we created very interesting discussions over there. So I encourage you that you take a look at this webinar and uh, and maybe it will answer your question in a better way. But at the end of this presentation, in one of the last slides, I will like spare some time explaining about the Fibonacci extension levels and how to use them to determine your target when trading trends. Um... Uh, and then we have another question from Raphael who asks, if it, is it okay to think stop loss order one on British pound Japanese yen uh, for pair that has high volatility and stop loss two on the American dollar Swiss franc for pair that has low volatility? Absolutely, that totally makes sense. By the way, totally makes sense because since the British pound Amer uh, the British pound Japanese yen for pair is very like uh, volatile. Uh, maybe you're willing like to put a tire stop loss order so you will be protected from a big price anomaly which is very likely to happen at volatile forex pair in the case of the american dollar swiss franc the swiss forex pair which is uh, like relatively less volatile you can pretty much use the stop loss order to alternative and uh, simply exit a trade either manually or wait until the price hits that stop loss order which i don't think is like the best way Maybe it's better to exit manually. Uh, yeah, and since it is not that volatile, you can always like check volatility and approach like different alternatives for your stop loss order. As I said, you are like a person with a brain, so it is totally up to you where to put it. And since it is always good to put meaning in your levels, it, it will be good if, if you take a look at your trades and decide even before the stop loss order is hit to decide if this trend is actually exalted and the price is currently breaking it. Because um, this will like improve the results of your trading strategy, uh, in my opinion. And uh, for example, every forex pair is is like volatile in a separate like uh, time frame of the day. So this is also something that deserves consideration when uh, when trading forex. And now. I will like explain you about where you should where should your target go when trading your trading trend lines. 
Uh, actually, there is no like a certain level thing. There is like a certain level suggestion, but this is, as I said, something I'm, I'm going to talk about after the slide. Uh, my approach to target to like to place a target when trading trends uh, is to to like I'm constantly relying on previous events on the chart as a technical analyst, of course. And for this reason, I will suggest that you look at the previous trend impulses on the chart. Then you can calculate the average size of these three impulses, uh, these two impulses maybe, and you can apply the size as your target. For example, let me go back to the slide. For example, take a look. We have three impulses over here. And the third one is the one we're willing to trade. So before getting the third impulse, we get like the third bottom and we buy. But we don't know for how long to stay in this trade. For this reason, we can simply measure the size of the first impulse, which starts from point number one, and measure the size of the second impulse, which starts from point number two, and you can apply the average size of each of these two impulses. I mean, you can create like an average impulse out of these two impulses and apply this exact size as your target, starting from the moment of the bounce of point number three. Because since the price created moves of this high, of this size, it is very likely that it creates another one of this size. And I believe that it, this is a pretty relevant target. The other thing you can do is to maybe take the impulse which is smaller and, in, and impose its size like as a minimum target. This is another uh, approach. And the third thing I wanted to tell you is that you can always like use the extensions, the Fibonacci extensions like suggested by the Elliott Wave Theory. Uh, which will give you like exact levels to aim for when trading trends and at the same time when you trade with the Elliott Wave Theory uh, you can even be able to enter a trade earlier maybe at the second trend wave uh, because the confirmation of the Elliott Wave Theory comes after the price creates an impulse the first point, the first move and then creates a correction if this correction responds to the 50% Fibonacci level and the 61.8 Fibonacci level, we might be able to confirm uh, the Elliott Waves pattern on the chart, which might give us an early exit, uh, an early entry on the chart. And I would like you to remember one thing. The Elliott Wave theory is always useful when identifying real trends and their potential targets. I believe that this is a rule that deserves like uh, strong attention since it is very useful uh, to be applied when trading uh, for it. And I currently see that the that Romo is asking, can you explain how we can confirm the trend earlier using the Fibonacci levels, please? I believe that you're referring to the Elliott Wave theory. So this is what I'm going to do now. I will uh, simply. Uh, pop up my chart again and I will guys ask you to suggest a forex pair to discuss maybe All right, I see that Anyone come on which forex pairs guys would you like to discuss with me? Maybe Yeah, let all right Francis suggests uh, the American dollar South African rand for expert, which is the reason I'm switching to this chart. And since I have some indicators over here, I'm currently removing them, so I'm gonna get like a clean chart. Here it is. And uh, yes, let me see something. What is this? This is a very strong bearish trend, in my opinion. Are we able to connect the dots with a single trend line? Pretty much yes, absolutely. Yeah, and it is pretty relevant. Oops, what did I do? Yeah, here it is. It is, uh, of course, it is uh, pretty relevant to do so. So notice that there is a top over here, another one over here, third one, and the fourth one. And as I said, the price simply creates like one impulse, second impulse, third impulse, fourth impulse, and the trend is gone. So this is uh, this is why I believe that you should not wait for the fifth impulse because the price is very likely not to create this impulse. 
And now I will tell you about the way the Iliad wave theory works. But first, according to our rule, I would like to tell you first impulse, second impulse, third price interaction with the trend, meaning that we can pretty much short at this bearish candle and trade for like a price move. Well, if we take, for example, uh, if we if we take for example the size of the of of the smaller impulse because this is the bigger impulse no this is the smaller impulse yeah this is the bigger impulse no these impulses are pro approximately the same size so if we take for example uh like this size starting from the for some reason my chart is creating like shape after a shape so uh, for this reason I'm going to simply like clean my chart and now I'm like putting it from the top of the trend through the approximate support level over here because notice that the trend went uh, the impulse went to over here and this is like May 26 and the next candle is May 29 meaning that this is a big bearish gap caused by the the weekend close of the market so i believe that maybe this is the the more relevant thing to look for and when we apply this rectangle over here notice that the price increase is approximately of this size so this is why i believe that this is like a reasonable option to use when trading trends and now i will show you the Elliott wave theory so First, I will explain it like briefly because I assume that some of you might not be familiar with it. So the Iliad wave theory suggests that every trend consists of five price moves, where three of these price moves are in the direction of the trend and the other two are corrections. So we have move number one, impulse in the direction of the trend. Move number two, correction, contrary to the trend direction, which leads the price to the, to the trend line. Move number three, impulse in the direction of the trend. Move number four, another correction. Move number five, impulse in the direction of the trend. And then the Elliott wave theory suggests that a reversal is likely to happen. And this reversal is likely to, to happen in three waves. Wave A, which is contrary to the previous trend and usually breaks the trend. Wave B, that usually uh, will be opposite to the reversal, meaning that we, wave B is very likely to be in the direction of the trend and it is very likely to bring the price to a test of the trend from the opposite side. And then wave C, which is again uh, a reversal move contrary to the trend. And the good thing is that the Elliott wave theory suggests the size of each move, starting from move number two to move number C. So according to the Elliott wave theory, we have a trend that consists of move number one, move number two correction, move number two, uh, move number three impulse, move number four correction, and move number five. Then the Elliott wave theory suggests a breakout, a breakout move number uh, which is labeled with A, then move B, and then move C. And now let's see these levels to which Fibonacci levels they respond because the Elliott wave theory suggests that the size of each of these moves is likely to respond to a specific Fibonacci level. So according to the Elliott wave theory, this is move A, uh, this is move 1 and this is move 2. And the Elliott wave theory suggests that move 2 should reach either 61.8% or 50% of move 1, meaning that if I place the Fibonacci levels over here at move 1, I see, I see that the price, but I'm going to switch like to a bigger, to a bigger chart because I will be able to see it in a better way. Here it is over here. Yeah. Placing the Fibonacci uh, indicator beginning at the resistance level formed by one, two, three, four, five candles over here. See that this is move a uh, move one. And this is move 2. And move 2 goes exactly at the 61.8 Fibonacci level. 
meaning that if we see the price retracing at this level, we might be able to attain confirmation of our Elliott wave pattern. And this might appear to be a very nice entry point. Now, let's measure the other levels. The Elliott wave theory suggests that MOVE 3 should reach either 161.8% Fibonacci level or 261.8% Fibonacci level, which is an extension of MOVE, move number 2. So I place the Fibonacci indicator at MOVE number 2 at wave 2 and I see that the price reaches exactly the 161.8 Fibonacci level. Notice that the price goes below that level but this is a result of an opening gap created on May 29, 2017. So in my opinion this is the relevant bottom over here and this should, should be disregarded because the price actually did not break through the 161.8 Fibonacci level. It didn't close a candle over there. It opened a candle below that level. This is why I'm not taking into consideration this candle. Now let's measure the size of move number four. I simply take my Fibonacci indicator, place it at, the, at this bottom over here, like stretching it at move number three, and I measure the size of move number four. According to the Elliott wave theory, move number four should go either to 38.2, the 50 or the 61.8% Fibonacci level of move number three. And as you see, the candle bodies of move number four go exactly to the 50% Fibonacci level and the candle wigs go exactly at 61.8, meaning that in both of the cases, the move is totally valid. So for now, we have all the moves 100% conformed to the Elliott wave theory, which is the power of this strategy. And now let's measure the size of move number five. All right, placing the Fibonacci indicator between Uh, at move number four and according to the Elliott wave theory move number five should reach either 100% or 161.8% of the previous move which is move number four right over here here is readjusting the indicator and as you see the price goes exactly to 101 uh, 161.8 Fibonacci level which is the strength of this pattern and notice that I believe that this is a valid Elliott wave pattern and it creates like a tradable opportunities. So this could be considered as wave number A, wave B, and this might be wave C. And according to the Elliott wave theory, wave C is likely to reach either 100% of wave B, which is by the way currently absolutely completed, or 161.8% of wave B, meaning that the pattern is either finished or the price it's about to finish it pretty soon. Yeah, this is how the Elliott wave theory works. And now I see another question from, from Francis. He says, is moving averages still relevant in determining the trend? And yes, I totally agree with this statement because I, I use moving averages like for trend confirmation. As you probably know, moving averages are like lagging indicators, meaning that they have confirmation character. So for this reason, I'm going to insert a couple moving averages on my chart. For example, let's take a 100 moving, 100 period moving average. And now let's take another moving average which is going to be red of course pretty classy I'm gonna put it like 50 period moving average here it is inserted on the chart and we can always use a crossover of the moving averages to enter a trade so if the crossover is bearish you can simply short if the crossover is bullish you can simply buy pretty simple right yeah, but that, not that much because in this case, take a look at this. See that the moving average creates like a couple swings over here, which can lure us in a very like losing trace because if you, for example, short over here at this bearish crossover, then the opposite crossover comes over here, meaning that you will get a loss equal to, to 370 pips. And you don't want this to happen. Although sometimes, we have like pretty valid, no, this is a pretty like, 
yeah, take a look at it. This is a valid bearish trend. You can short over here and you can close over here and you get the whole trend. However, this is not the thing. Sometimes this strategy can lure you into a losing trade and it is always good to put like your thought uh, to put your thoughts when, when like trading with uh, moving averages. Yeah, absolutely. But in our case, let's see where the confirmation comes. Because, um, so now I'm building the trend line again, approximately like this. So the confirmation in our case comes early, right over here. Meaning that in this case, it will be very good to trade this trend based on the moving average crossover. Yeah, because it, it is like, it provides very like attractive entry point. However, how would you know that this, this cross over here is not the same like lie like the one over here yeah so this is like a, it, it is a tricky thing and you should always like put your personal thoughts in this when approaching it but basically yes you can always rely on moving averages when you're willing to attain like a confirmation signal um yeah exactly this is how it works and now i suggest that we continue yeah, because I was currently doing like practical examples. We continue with the questions and the answer section because questions are piling. So I, I just decided to officially switch the slide. Uh, yeah, and Dan, our friend Dan asks, would the super smoother indicator works the same way as the moving average? Well, uh, yeah, I, t I totally agree with this because after all, the super smoother is like a type of a moving average which ha which takes more like stuff into consideration. I mean. Pretty much every moving average works the same way. The difference is the way they're calculated. For example, if you have a simple moving average, you simply take into consideration each period equally. But if you have an exponential moving average, you put emphasis on the more recent periods. If you have volume weighted moving average, you put emphasis, I mean the calculation puts emphasis on the periods that have higher volumes and takes them as more relevant. If you have displaced moving average, you simply have whatever moving average you want which is simply like shifted to the left or to the right in order to create the displacement. Nothing special. Uh, Georges asks, how to realize that one cross of the moving average is fake? Yeah. As I said, you should always put personal thoughts on this. And in my opinion, you should always like rely on an additional strategy to confirm like uh, maybe to confirm your signal. In our case, we have a bearish crossover over here but we don't know if it's valid as we see it it is a valid signal but we don't know this since like uh, we don't know what's gonna happen so what i'm going to do now i'm going to add the let's say the the relative strength index indicator and i'm gonna see what signals it's giving me unfortunately the rsi is currently not very persuasive uh, because i don't have an overbought signal over here however what i see is that i have some kind of a bearish tendency over here but this is not like the best signal. So in this case, the RSI is not the indicator that will give us a tip about what's going to happen in the price action. An indicator I always like to use uh, for confirmation of a price moves is the volume indicator. And the reason for this is that uh, real price moves usually happen during like big trading volumes. As you remember what I said in the beginning, like trends appear when the price is volatile, when the volumes are high. For this reason, you can always check with the volume indicator what are things over there. For example, take a look at this crossover. Volume is pretty low, and at the same time, it is decreasing. Take a look, the line I'm building is bearish. All right, now let's check this cross over here. Here, volume is pretty high. However, we see that it decreases pretty quick, so so not sure this might be a move that can lure you into a losing trade but now let's let's check the valid move actually zooming in the chart and what am i seeing i see huge bullish bars from the volume indicator although this one the first big bar responds to this candle that is bullish the second bar is even bigger and it responds to a bearish candle at the same time, I see that the bullish candle has very high, very like long upper candle wick, meaning that uh, the American dollar, South African rand is probably like 
the bear start uh, putting pressure on the bulls, which is the reason why the price gets squeezed. And we see that upper candle wick. At the same time, we see the bearish candle that actually kind of engulfs the bullish candle and creates maybe a bullish a bearish engulfing pattern. I mean, it's a little bit forced, but after all, we have like some of signal, so we can take this one. And at the same time, the volume bar is even higher. So in my opinion, this could be used to confirm the crossover of the two moving averages. And it could like give you a very nice short signal and if it will give you an early entry point. And if you use like the Elliott wave theory, in combination to this, you see that this top reaches like 61.8% Fibonacci level, and you can pretty much short it because you have the moving average crossover, you have the Elliott wave theory, you have the volume indicator, you have this potential bearish engulfing pattern. So this is how you should, in my opinion, combine signal. And now I see that Raphael asks, is there a four points on the New Zealand dollar Japanese yen chart? Uh, meaning that I'm going to switch to this chart now and I'm going to check for four points. What do I see here? I see the four hour chart, I see one point, second point, third point, fourth point. Let's see if I can build a trend over here. Yes, I can build a trend, however, these two points, in my opinion, should be taken either as one or they should be disregarded totally because when I build a trend the price is pretty distant like on these two points and i doubt that the price is at like fifth point stage i i believe that this is either currently the third or the fourth point of the new zealand dollar japanese yen forex pair and as you see the price is currently bouncing so there is a big chance that the price reaches the, the height of this top and maybe it can even go higher you never know but yeah i believe that this is uh, maybe a valid trend scenario you never know but <laughs> what i see and what i can confirm is that this in my opinion is something like an expanding triangle which gives which which gives like tradable opportunities and as you know every triangle which has bullish inclination like the one we're currently looking at uh is likely to send the price in various directions and as you see the bullish trend of the new zealand dollar japanese yen forex pair has been present like for a long time meaning that it may be time for a correction and this expanding triangle might be the beginning of this correction so approach carefully if the price is going to create a breakout over here because this might be the beginning of a very very nice reversal on the chart and now what i'm going to do is to turn on my pretty face again and now you should be able to see me again hey, hey that's me happy to see you all right guys and since there no questions anymore let's check this out again questions no no questions no questions absolutely all right i would like to thank you for being part of this webinar it is a pleasure for me to to talk about uh, forex and charts because i really like technical analysis and getting into this stuff uh, thank you very much for attending in the meantime before i end the webinar i would like to remind you that we're currently running a giveaway for 3,000 American dollars, meaning that we're willing to sponsor a Forex trader with 3,000 American dollars for trading. So if you want to participate in the giveaway, simply go to www.forexbolt.com slash giveaway and you will be entered to take some of the entries for the giveaway. And you never know, you might be one of the winners. And they're like maybe... 20 something more days until the end of the giveaway i'm not sure exactly check out the website and you will see exactly how many days are until the giveaway is done but it has been present for something like maybe one week seven eight nine days approximately so you have plenty of time to participate and to increase your chance of winning three thousand american dollars so for example if you cannot afford to start a forex career with like a decent capital or for example if you have like zero to your forex trading account this is a very good way to to resume your career because we're willing to sponsor a single forex trader with three thousand american dollars so feel free again i repeat to go to www.forexbowl.com slash giveaway and you will be able to participate in the giveaway 
Again, I would like to thank you very much for participating in this webinar. It was a great pleasure for me. And uh, I would also like to remind you that this webinar is going to be available at forexbolt.com slash webinars. So you'll be able to watch it constantly day after day if you're with the trader plan. So thank you very much again. I'm wishing you a great day and may the trends be with you.